Hello, hello and welcome. Today we are going to talk about measuring fundamental properties of brain activities as resonant waves. More specifically, we're going to look at two papers, one from 2016 and one from May 2023, which construct eigenvalues and eigenvectors that explain brain dynamics. But they construct them differently. The first paper proposes connectum eigenmodes, while the second one proposes geometric eigenmodes. And in this presentation, we will look in more detail at both. The presentation was put together by the QRI 2023 summer cohort, which includes myself, Ricardo, Ethan, and Carlos. And next, they will tell you a little bit more about these two fascinating frameworks. All right, so let's begin with an overview of Article 1, which basically outlines the paradigm of connectome eigenmodes. The article attempts to study collective neuromechanics, and in mammals, the emergence of oscillatory networks has been shown. Using fMRI, slow fluctuations of the signal, which in this case are below 0.1 Hz, have been shown to be strongly temporarily correlated across wide regions. Thus, even without external stimuli, activity is strongly correlated across the brain. These correlation patterns have been termed resting state networks, or RSNs for short. An unified underlying principle that shows all the properties of the connectome give rise to the properties of the oscillatory networks is lacking, so the article attempts to resolve this. And according to the article, it is the eigen decomposition of the Laplacian matrix of the connectome which predicts the RSNs and its properties. The second paper, Geometric Constraints on Human Brain Function, is an update to the connectome-specific harmonic wave paradigm. The CSHW paradigm does not directly account for the intrinsic geometry of the brain, which, per neural field theories, physically shapes and imposes boundary conditions on the emergent dynamics. This is presumably why the authors decided deriving the eigenmodes from geometry instead of the connectome could give interesting results. These geometric eigenmodes are computed by solving the eigenvalue problem on a representation of the neocortex with the laplace beltrami operator, a generalization of the Laplace operator to Riemannian manifolds. We then have an orthogonal set of eigenmodes that can be used to reconstruct spatiotemporal dynamics as a simple weighted sum. Alright, so for the connectome eigenmodes paper, a graph representation for 10 human connectomes was created through MRI and DTI data. So, for the vertices, about 20,000 nodes were sampled from the surface of gray matter for each individual, while for the edges, two things were taken into consideration. One, local connections to the six nearest neighbors on the cortical surface mesh, and two, long-range connections determined by white matter cortical and thalamocortical fibers. Very importantly, the graph representation is undirected and unweight, which basically means that all entries of the adjacency matrix will be either 0 or 1, and the adjacency matrix will be symmetric. So, next, we have the definitions of the matrices that will be used in the paper. So, first of all, we have the adjacency matrix, which is defined as usual. In the entry with coordinates i, j, there will be a 1 if vertex i is connected to vertex j by an edge, and it will be 0 otherwise. The degree matrix is also defined as usual, so the matrix is filled with zeros with the exception of the main diagonal. And in the i-th entry of the main diagonal, we will just write the degree of vertex i. Now, the graph Laplacian is defined in this paper like this, and to get the eigenmodes of this graph Laplacian, we'll basically be solving this eigenvalue problem over here. So from now on, the obtained eigenvectors may be named either eigenfunctions or connectome harmonics. For calculating the geometric eigenmodes, a 32,492 vertex triangular surface mesh of a brain hemisphere from Free Surfer's FS Average Population Average template was used. This was done with the LaPy Python Library's Cubic Finite Element method, interpolating through the discrete dataset to create a smooth manifold for the LBO to act on. One important note is that all analyses in this paper focused on unihemispheric eigenmodes, but because bihemispheric eigenmodes can be represented as symmetric or antisymmetric combinations of unihemispheric eigenmodes, the approach extends easily to the whole brain. Later in the paper, pre-processed fMRI data of 255 unrelated healthy individuals from the Human Connectome Project is used to assess the reconstruction accuracy of geometric eigenmodes in other basis sets. As one of the basis sets to be compared, connectome eigenmodes were derived here in the same way they were in the original CSHW paper. For the cortex, which is understood here as a 2D model embedded in 3D Euclidean space, we see the general definition of the Laplace-Beltrami operator below on this slide. 
This equation captures intrinsic geometry, including the curvature of the cortical surface. Using this to solve the Helmholtz equation, which is just the eigenvalue problem for the Laplace operator, and in this case, the LVO, we are able to compute the geometric eigenmodes. The last basis set that we are interested in, other than geometric eigenmodes, is derived from a simulated connectome constructed via a homogeneous stochastic wiring process, with a probability of connection between vertices decaying exponentially in distance, that is, the exponential distance rule. Because this directly gives the adjacency matrix, solving this eigenvalue problem is simple, done using the graph Laplacian in the same way that Carlos described two slides ago, and represented as you can see below. Alright, so while reading the connectome eigenmodes paper, we may ask ourselves why would it ever be useful to consider the connectome eigenmodes. So it turns out that as the number of nodes increases, the graph Laplacian converges to the Laplace Boltrami operator, which will actually be quite relevant for geometric eigenmodes later on. Finding the eigenmodes of the Laplacian is a good idea, because the eigenvalues of the Laplacian relate to natural frequencies of the geometry, while the eigenvectors relate to the wave patterns themselves. The mutual information between the RSNs and the harmonics was measured, to see whether this eigen decomposition was actually useful, and it turns out that there was a statistically significant similarity between the default mode network and a harmonic in the range of the ninth connectome harmonic in all 10 subjects. For other RSNs, there were greater differences in mutual information. Something very important to note is that Bichel, Somito Mutter, and Limbic networks show similarity to low frequency harmonics, while control, dorsal attention, and ventral attention match a broad range of connectome harmonics. So, how well can geometric eigenmodes explain brain activity? To answer these questions, the authors um, took the geometric eigenmodes they derived and they fit them to different activation maps um, for different subjects, time frames, and tasks using an amplitude parameter. Then they parcelated the brain into 180 regions and they computed the correlation between empirical activations over these regions and reconstructed activation using uh, the eigenmodes. With just 10 geometric eigenmodes, they saw a correlation coefficient of 0.38 and reached uh, 0.8 with 100 modes. The reconstruction was similar between task evolved and task free activation maps, but it lowered as expected as the number of parcellations increased. So overall, geometric eigenmodes significantly outperformed connectome eigenmodes when using 20 or more modes, although there was a slight advantage for connectome eigenmodes with 10 or fewer modes. And interestingly, uh, by removing different eigenmodes at once, the author also showed that the long wavelength modes contributed much more significantly to the reconstruction accuracy than the short wavelength ones. Here we have the reconstruction accuracy of different eigenmodes on the brain activity associated with a few tasks. Overall, we see that geometric eigenmodes outperform connectome eigenmodes and the eigenmodes derived from plane exponential distance rule connectivity, indicating that geometric eigenmodes are a more natural way to decompose and understand brain dynamics in the neocortex. Now that the neocortex has been analyzed, a natural question is if geometric eigenmodes are still good at describing activity in subcortical structures. To answer this, geometric eigenmodes for subcortical structures were calculated in an analogous way to before, but instead using a tetrahedral mesh to account for the fully 3D geometry of the hippocampus, thalamus, and striatum. Additionally, functional gradients in these structures were computed from functional coupling data. These gradients represent dominant modes of variation in functional organization. The spatial profiles of the first three functional gradients were near perfectly matched to the shape of the geometric eigenmodes with an R value greater than or equal to 0.93. In the first 20, all had an absolute value of R greater than 0.5. This suggests that the functional organization of subcortical structures is strongly determined by geometric eigenmodes. Here we have a figure from the paper that shows representations of the subcortical structures in question and the first three geometric eigenmodes and functional gradients for each subcortical structure. The first two functional gradients and geometric eigenmodes match shockingly well for all subcortical structures, with the lowest R value being 0.988, and the correlation begins to drop faster with the third eigenmode. So, in the connectome eigenmodes paper, the eigenmodes have been identified, however, we haven't yet found mechanisms for them to arise. The authors of the paper suggest that several biological mechanisms taken together, 
such as somatosin expressing inhibitory neurons and slow synaptic transmission caused by n methyl d aspartate receptors, contributing mostly to excitatory currents, seems to keep rise to functional circuitry equivalent to short-range excitation coupled with broad inhibition. This type of functional circuitry, known as the Mexican hat organization, is very important, and in fact, it's a necessary condition for self-organization in neural field models based on the wilson cohen differential equations, which we shall explore next. The connectome plasion was incorporated into the diffusion term of the wilson cohen equations, as shown in this slide, thus extending a variant of the neural field model based on these equations to the 3D connectome model. For a wide range of diffusion parameters, oscillatory patterns self-organize, and through linear stability analysis, with different speeds of excitation and inhibition, a wide range of connectome harmonics could be activated, making the neural field model a plausible mechanism for self-organization of connectome harmonics. As part of their work on geometric eigenmodes, um, their authors modeled neural activity using a neural field theory wave equation, um, whose spatial component satisfied the Helmholtz equation, which is equivalent to the laplace beltrami operator, from where the geometric eigenmodes were derived. They compare the neural activity generated by this wave model with a balanced excitation inhibition model, which is aligned to the connectome-centric view, and show that actually the wave model achieved comparable or superior performance in reconstructing empirical data. And, and strikingly, when the model, when the wave model was given a one millisecond input to the primary visual area of the cerebral cortex, it yielded a propagating wave that split along the dorsal and ventral visual processing stream consistent with the mainstream understanding of hierarchical visual processing while having no knowledge of this arrangement. So it's natural to wonder which framework is better, which framework to build upon. And overall, geometric eigenmode seems to provide a simpler and more elegant framework. And you can see this also from the fact that they would be easier to apply in practice, as they only require anatomical images and mesh representation. Whereas connectome eigenmodes, as you can see from the image on the left, they require both MRI and DTI images. They require a graph-based model of connectivity with includes definition of graph nodes and also the application of a thresholding procedure to remove spurious connections, which um, can be arbitrary. Furthermore, empirically, um, the, ex the experiments in the geometric eigenmodes paper demonstrated um, a superior ability of geometric eigenmodes to reconstruct brain dynamics. And overall, the results also feel consistent with the general intuition that geometry poses a more fundamental constraint on the behavior of the system. Um, in other fields, um, such as cymatics, the standing waves are determined entirely by the geometry of the plate and the frequency of the vibrations. Another interesting aspect of comparison is uh, the invariance of the two frameworks. And on the one hand, connectome eigenmodes were derived using a different connectome graph for each subject, whereas geometric eigenmodes were derived from a mesh representation that used a population average template of the neocortical surface and fitted to each subject only using an amplitude parameter. So from this, geometric eigenmodes appear to be more invariant across people, which can potentially provide a more generalizable framework for measuring brain activity. However, there is a small open question that might be interesting to further investigate, which is whether this higher generalization ability could come at the expense of explaining finer differences between two brains that don't involve um, changes in shape. One perspective that both this paper and the connectome-specific harmonic wave paper used is that patterns of global resonance seem to be more strongly predictive of what the brain is doing than the activity in a particular region. Extending this, we may wonder if the internal representation of certain tasks is well captured by geometric eigenmodes in particular. For instance, it may be that the relational task activation pattern we see below is simply the mind self-organizing around resonant modes that reflect the structure of the task. The first few modes may be a good first approximation for the structure of the task, 
splitting the mind into two sets with a relation between them, with higher modes filling in more of the details required to complete the task while preserving the overall structure. That said, making such correlations is an iffy business at the best of times, and more rigorous testing will be needed to determine how exactly the structure and dynamics of experience relate to the brain's eigenmodes. A more well-founded and immediately testable hypothesis is that as the intensity of experience increases, the reconstruction accuracy gained from adding smaller wavelength eigenmodes will increase. Just as with a Cladney plate, resolving finer patterns requires more energy input, so it may be the case that organization around eigenmodes of shorter wavelength happens during higher energy experiences. As this is a very new paradigm, we can pose quite a few questions about how geometric eigenmodes relate to other concepts in neuroscience. For instance, we may wonder how they change during development of the brain. At either age extreme, understanding how geometric eigenmodes differ from those of an adult may shed light on how exactly the brain develops over the lifetime, and why. Brain injuries are also a relevant condition to investigate here, especially considering that some injuries can substantially change the geometric structure of a person's brain, and yet they can end up behaviorally normal after a recovery period. There's also the question of diseases that affect brain activity and phenomenology with little change in the global spatial structure of the brain. Is there anything that an analysis using geometric eigenmodes can say about how these diseases work and how brains work in general? Using the lens of this paradigm, some of the reasons for brain lateralization may remain a mystery no longer. The spatial organization of each hemisphere is different, and geometric eigenmodes suggest that there may be significant computational effects as an immediate result of this. Is it possible, using geometric eigenmodes, to determine why a particular task involves brain regions of a particular hemisphere? These were just some of the questions that came to our minds, and there are many more out there, far too many to explore during this presentation in fact, so that will be all for now. Thank you for watching, there are likely going to be some great extensions of these paradigms in the future, stay tuned, and we hope you found this presentation interesting and helpful.